my experience is that uh, companies fail to deliver on kind of their their value prop around SAM or ITAM uh, when they lack the knowledge and expertise to actually deep dive. So there's a there's a notion in in uh, asset management that like you you can take your deployment data. Anybody can look at your deployment number uh, data and look count, but the the real value that you're going to get from uh, from Sam in particular is knowing the deep expertise on the license models, understanding how uh, the the negotiation cycle and, and contract uh, amendments can be processed. Um, and most organizations do not uh, go through that on a regular basis. They do, you know, they have a contract with say Microsoft once every three years. And so they get that experience once every three years. Whereas if you use, you know, a professional services firm uh, and SAM, uh, SAM services, uh, the folks that are in those, you know, that are delivering on, on those services go through that uh, on a weekly, if not daily basis. They understand how those publishers interact, you know, what is the art of the possible? Um, and they have the deep subject matter expertise to defend the positions. And then as an aside, I've gone through audits before with zero experience. That's how I, I got involved in this. And, and I have the war wounds to kind of uh, showcase that. Um, my first audit with, with Oracle, it went okay, but it wasn't, um, it, it's not, if I were to repeat the process now and, and the experience, uh, the outcomes for, for the company I was working for at the time would, would have been far better than, than what we, we experienced. And I think that's just a function of experience and a function of uh, going through those those situations and understanding kind of more of the technical underpinnings of of, uh, of those particular publishers. Um, well, I think SaaS is 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 poised to have some compliance issues. We know or at least my, from my experience, I know that a lot of the SaaS companies could be auditing right now, and there are compliance-based issues. Uh, you can just look towards like Salesforce on how they assign users. They they have all of the intelligence to audit if they want to, uh, without touching your on-prem. Uh, and so that's probably a compliance concern. Um, and the only real thing you can do to kind of combat that or to defend against that is become proactive. Uh, in the past, SAM, ITAM has been really a reactive uh, discipline or typically a, a reactive discipline. Uh, most companies didn't want to inv invest in kind of like doing proactive uh, governance around that, their software. Um, but I think with cloud and, and, and SaaS, that it's, it's really going to have to become more proactive because it's not about, um, you know, just, just keeping compliance is about optimizing as well. Um, and you can kind of kill two birds with one stone if, if, if you take an, a proactive approach. So my experience is that unless you have, um, you know, a C-level exec that understands um, what the, uh, you know, the, the benefits of, of SAM and ITAM are, uh, you, you t typically get kind of lackluster uh, su support and thus uh, you, you typically don't get resources, both financial resources to, you know, uh, fund the particular program, but also like human resources of like expertise um, and the willingness to invest uh, in those expertise to uh, drive the, the outcomes that the company is looking for. And those up outcomes uh, may or may not be compliance related. I think most businesses want to stay compliant, but uh, Really, most of the C-levels or that I've uh, interacted with are looking for more than that. They're looking for how do we, you know, positively uh, impact the business? Um, how do we deliver service faster? How do we, you know, uh, take, you know, our investment dollars and repurpose them to kind of high value projects? And I think SAM and ITAM can do that. But the story being told uh, spits specifically in, in North America is typically around compliance. And I think that needs to shift. Um, but, you know, going back to the question, it's, it's really, I think, around executive support and 
how do you communicate both with those executives and then kind of some of the different uh, lower tiers or lower levels of the organization on why this is going going on. There are plenty good SAM services out there, um, but a word of caution is to really figure out what you need and what are the outcomes that you're looking for before just jumping into a SAM service. Um, a lot of the tool vendors will say that, you know, their tools are kind of the, the silver bullet, but I know from experience and most most folks that have worked in SAM uh, or ITAM know that a tool is only as good as <laughs> the tool is, um, and it doesn't really deliver the outcomes you're looking for. So uh, whenever you're working with a SAM uh, provider, I would ask really relevant questions on uh, can you deliver this outcome? What is going on? How do we get support? Those types of things and really make a judgment call on whether they're there to support you in your uh, SAM journey or are they there to sell you something? Um, you know, at Metrics Data 360, we're really there to help you deliver on the, uh, the outcomes that you're looking for, which is typically around uh, optimizing your licenses and and thus taking that data and pushing it back to procurement and delivering uh you know cost hard dollar cost savings on the, at a contractual level and that might be reducing your price per unit uh, it might be adding additional terms and conditions to the agreement um, but we you know uh, from a metrics data perspective we really aim to uh, arm uh, the business with the, the facts and evidence to support what they're trying to ask for within negotiations. And that delivers um, kind of the outcomes that most organizations that we've ever worked with are, are, are looking for.